Nigeria has had a checkered political and economic history. Like many other African countries, it won its independence in 1960 and went on to install a parliamentary democracy akin to Britain's. This era, known as the First Republic, lasted from 1960 to 1966 and was marked by ethnic tensions, poor governance and corruption. Plotters used corruption as a reason to justify military coup in 1966 and 1967, whose aftermath threw the country into a civil war. Both the coups and the war paved way for almost three decades of military rule, interrupted only briefly from 1979 to 1983, when General Olusegun Obasanjo returned the country to civilian rule. Shortly after, the 1983 coup of General Muhammad Buhari ensured that the military stayed in control of political power until 1999 when democracy returned to Nigeria. One of the widely referenced international scale on the purity of countries is the Yearly Corruption Perception Index published by Transparency International. Over an 18-year record, Nigeria hasn't performed well. It would be either self-serving or narcissistic to deny the claim by the former Prime Minister of United Kingdom, David Cameron, that Nigeria is fantastically corrupt. Corruption in Nigeria appears to be present and takes many forms, from massive contract fraud to petty bribe, from straight-up embezzlement to complicated money laundering schemes, from pocketing the salaries of non-existent workers to stirring plum jobs to relatives and friends. Some officials enjoy the privilege so excessively that they are widely seen as a form of legalized corruption. Nigeria has a vibrant and mostly free press, brown envelope journalism is rife for both media moguls and the journalists who work for them accepting or even soliciting cash from politicians is a gain of the job. Over 75% of journalists surveyed as part of a 2013 study admitted to accepting such financial gifts euphemistically referred to as transport money or kola not. Above the working level, editors and publishers often receive even bigger bribes to manipulate their coverage and quash stories that might embarrass their political patrons. Nigeria's main anti-corruption agency, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, prosecuted Dark Communications, owner of Africa Independent Television, and its chairman for accepting 2.1 billion naira in public funds diverted into then-President Goodluck Jonathan's re-election campaign. Such grand corruption not only erodes press freedoms and fuels media bias, it also sustains many fly-by-night media outlets that rely on brown envelope journalism to stay in business. In Nigeria, electoral corruption is not merely a means to an end, it is also a lucrative pursuit unto itself. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, estimates that it spent about $550 million on the 2015 election, while the country's political parties perhaps spent as much as $2 billion campaigning. Each of Nigeria's 36 states also infused millions of dollars each year into state independent electoral commissions taxed with conducting sham local government elections on behalf of the governor in power. Although corruption has been a defining feature of Nigeria's election since 1999, one recent example stands out. According to EFCC prosecutors, former Petroleum Minister Dezani Alison Madweke used $115 million to bribe INEC officials to secure victory for the PDP in the 2015 election. One of the world's largest unitary police forces, the 270,000 strong Nigerian police force, is endemically corrupt, poorly paid 
and often predatory. Police personnel are mostly absent outside Nigeria's towns and cities, except at road checkpoints where they can be seen soliciting petty bribes for motorists. Police officers are Nigeria's most bribed type of official, according to a 2016 survey. Though respected at home and abroad, Nigeria's three main anti-corruption agencies, the EFCC, the Independent Corruption Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, and the Code of Conduct Bureau have at times faced corruption accusation themselves. Successive presidents have used the EFCC and its sister's agency to go after corrupt political rivals while pressuring them to turn a blind eye to their own allies' misdeeds. Critics complain that President Muhammad Buhari's anti-corruption efforts are similarly lopsided, with one senator from his own party asserting that his government fights corruption within the government with sweet-smelling perfume, while it fights corruption against opponents and critics of government with a powerful insecticide. Recently, Ibrahim Magu, a Nigerian police officer who served as acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, from 9th November 2015 until his suspension on the 7th of July 2020, was over weighty allegations of misconduct. Petroleum revenues are the lifeblood of official corruption in Nigeria because they constitute over 75% of total government receipts and well over 90% of export earnings. Nigeria's federal, state and local government structures essentially function as mechanisms for dividing up and spending what Nigerians refer to as their national cake, which is the oil and gas revenues. The epicenter of petrol corruption is the state oil company, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, which shapes industry policy and regulations and spend lavishly on itself with minimal oversight in ways that are out of step with international best practices. A former group general manager of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation NNPC on Thursday, the night of July 2020, told a federal high court in Lagos how it delivered 12 padlock bags containing $70 million to an Abuja-based banker on the instructions of a former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Mrs. Deizani Alison Madweke. The former bank boss was specifically accused of handling $25 million out of a total of $150 million, which Mrs. Alison Madweke allegedly doled out to influence the 2015 general elections. The top official of the corporation who is testifying before the court as an Economic and Financial Crimes Commission witness in the ongoing trial of a former executive director, First Bank PLC, Dawudu Lawal, further claimed that he delivered money to the Abuja banker, One Charles, in front of Dumi Supermarket in Abuja. On Wednesday, the 8th of July 2020, ex-NNPC boss Mr. Andrew Yakubu, who is facing money laundering charge, told the Federal High Court in Abuja that the $9.7 million and 74,000 euros the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC found in his house in 2017 was gifted to him. Recall that the EFCC, through its whistleblower policy, raided Yakubo's guest house situated at Sabontasha, Kaduna State, and recovered funds which were in foreign currencies. In conclusion, the tax of cleaning up the stench of corruption in Nigeria is monumental. Nigeria, to fight corruption successfully, concerted effort must be made to build institutions, systems and processes that enhance transparency and make corrupt practices more difficult in the first place. But the realistic question here is, is it possible for Nigeria to be a corrupt-free one?